Even before we realized reality for what it is, some of us, in one way or another, knew how hard it was to fit into these narratives. We were born into families, with social circles going around and around. To me it seemed almost automatic, for it was that predictable. And we forgot what we knew, then forgetting that we forgot. Yet somehow we still knew, deep down, that we had forgotten. We just didn't know what. So we began a search for meaning that, at the time, was meaningless. After all, we had a role to play, had we not. We had to study, to work, to get married and reproduce. Oh, and we also had to aim for success. I was aiming for success for a long time. I thought that was the transcendent. Do you know what I found? Nothing. All vain motions and efforts. But not in vain. Don't misunderstand me. Had I not searched for the meaningless, I would have never come to a point where I allowed meaning to search for me. You see, there is no meaning here, and yet it hides just beyond the plain sight of all we perceive. Meaning is what allows us to recognize what is truly of value, and that certainly is not found here, in this endless game of monopoly, or even game of the goose, in Portuguese, we call it Jogo da Glória, that is, Game of the Glory. <laughs> we were always dreamers. Anyway, value is recognized by realizing and accepting the meaninglessness of reality. Then we begin to truly value that which does not belong here and yet looks familiar. Love, honesty, fellowship... And were those there when we were born as another character in a line of characters in this world? Maybe they were. But for some of us, that was meaningless, because the love, honestly, honesty and fellowship we sought was not of this world, was not this world's cheap copies. So as some of us came to a point where meaning was able to seek us instead, we started to find those who are, like us, yet different. Of the same, but individual. Born under different conjunctions of lights in the sky that threw the dice for our proceedings here, and yet alike in what truly matters, which is nothing that is matter. One such others is the woman who shares with me this current path. But, as I allowed, others appeared whom I have been blessed to come in contact with. Should I say their names? What is in a name? Names like Anna, Wanda, Harold, John, Nick, Patrick. Do they define anything beyond their roles in the matter that doesn't matter at all? I think not. But today I would like to share the storytelling told by one such brother in the life, one whom I am thankful and privileged to have found and relate to. He will tell the never-ending story that must have an ending for us. He will speak to the heart of all the living among us, those who see what others cannot, as our noble Matt so rightly put. So, without further ado, lest you guys start calling me an emo, I am now honored to feature on my channel, in his own voice and words, Patrick from the Start Where You Stand channel. Listen closely. So this is the audio of the text that I wrote that this story is the spiritual narrative as opposed to the literal narrative. I died willingly. Then, 55 years later, here I am. I try to explain some uses of terms and how we need metaphor to gain an easier perspective into our condition. I'm not the only one that entered into death, hell, willingly to help stir your remembrances. Try to get the inference. You stir your own remembrance. You had to die to enter in here. 
into this realm. You had to die to enter in. You have to die to leave. You leave the same way you came in. However, your true self, having experienced death, no longer chases that experience, no longer able to be tricked. You became death to know what you had to begin with, namely, life. Is there more to this? Yes. However, it's not important for me to know, and only known by those it is meant to be known by. I'm not meant to know it, or know it yet. I am fine with that. How do I know these other things? I have been telling you all along, all one need do is ask. Sincerely ask and be patient for the answer and know that it comes. It may be in synchronicity form, usually it is, or it may fall off a shelf, or it may be a kiss on your mouth, but you will know. You have to put off childish and immature things and get serious about this. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourself, and your last laugh ends up being on you. Welcome to hell. Want to leave? Make yourself accountable for your own actions and listen to your heart and stop giving your attention and thoughts to a God that does not even exist. There are no gods, people. There are entities and creatures and all sorts of things, even claiming to be gods, yet there is no such thing as God. There is what you are a part of, most high spiritual being of which you are, the Father of life in you, as you. Your spiritual you, represented outside of you as the sun above. Your body's soul is the mother, represented by the emotional tides from the moon above. And your body with ego, and all the above, is the child. The mother and father is one, returning back to life as the parent of your own being, your own existence. Father, mother, child is energy frequencies, all degrees of the same energy. Hell is the low end, which is death under a light that leaves shadow. Most high is self-explanatory. It's the true life and light that leaves no shadow. There is life and hell harbors it and shelters it, though hell is death itself. The master of your death which is your body, no longer has claim to your realm, which is your body, that becomes a living, alive you, which is the new child with the attributes of both spiritual father and mother energies. You create that change by being in your body. How? What happened? Your energy shifted. It, your body, fades to nothingness, and we, a new child, enter the life we have always had available to us, yet we're unable to see or know it until matured enough to know it. Your spiritual body that existed always, yet died when it entered into the body of your death, cannot return as it once was. It has to be replanted and become a new spiritual body, a new child, and be adopted back into the family tree of life. Your energy shifts, which is the friction needed to germinate and prepare to break the surface into the real once more. Yet all things will be as new to you, because the former remembrance, the former things have passed. No longer remember, because you entered into death to know what life truly is. Welcome to life. Want to stay? Well... For starters, recognize your heart and tame your thoughts, and know that your heart will still try to fool you and mind, but your spirit will spank both of you till you recognize the correct inner voice that your truest loving spiritual heart is speaking. Cheer up! Nothing is alive in hell. It stays in hell forever. Only the producers of the Creature Feature Show, like I like to say, and call them, stay in hell. And honestly, 
They're right at home in death. They love it. They serve their purpose in it. We should know. We banished them here. And upon seeing their depravity of light, creating from the living to harness and sustain themselves, we entered in to give the dead a chance at sentience. And ultimately, we add to our own life by saving that portion that was stolen, and we give new life to that body, your body, soul, and join with it so we not only enter back into life ourselves again, but we bring a new portion of us that never existed before the foundations of time. Not ever will again, nor ever will again. When this realm is no more, we bring a new portion of us that never existed before the foundations of time, nor ever will again. When this realm is no more, we came in less than. We leave more than. This is the story of the two of us becoming one. The masculine and feminine become one. Androgynous or androgyny is inwardly. It is our truest state of being, not outwardly which is what they want to confuse us with and why they purposefully create substances that accelerate this horrendous crime against the flesh and ultimately our spiritual counterparts. And so the metaphors are father, mother, child, Sun, moon, realm, hell, death, your body. But now the child, the child, the child becomes the parent. Nature reveals this. We are to be as children, our inner child, it is said. It's to be nurtured for the kingdom, the realm beyond this, within this, that we cannot see that it is all around. It is full of that child nature, that child. It is full of children not dumbed down, not the adult. Now we are subconsciously, collectively manifesting in hell the things of a dunce, adult, an adult would think of. We need to get back into ourself, to know ourself, to find that hinted, hidden inner child, which is your new relationship with your father, your spiritual self, and your mother, your soul. Because the father energy is still like a child. And what we've gained here and learned and have through this experience of death, which we sacrificed our own life to enter in, we gain it back and then some. We mature. We become the parent. The father is now mature. It's not adult. It is grown, added to matured and from here I don't know where else it goes that's all that's a wrap